Every year since 2007, What Car and the Camping and Caravanning Club have teamed up to name Britain's best tow cars. In 2022, the overall winner was this, the Audi Q5. Well, I say it was this car. The standard Q5 was actually the overall winner, whereas this is the Sportback. The Sportback has been designed with this sloping coupe-like roof line to add a little bit more style at the expense of some practicality. But mechanically, this car is all but identical to the Q540 TDI that was named overall champion at the What Car Tow Car Awards 2022. The car we're driving has the same 204 horsepower 2 litre diesel engine as the award winner, and it's a very fine engine to tow with. Torque or pulling power is a lot more relevant than horsepower when towing, and this engine has 295 pounds feet plenty to handle a sensibly matched caravan. We've been towing a Swift Challenger X860 weighing 1,504 kilograms, borrowed from club preferred dealer Broad Lane Leisure, and the Audi has easily towed it up to speed. Whenever Watt Car and the Camping and Caravanning Club review a tow car, the quality we look for above all else is stability, and that's really the Q5's hallmark as a towing vehicle. It really is exceptionally stable. On all types of roads and in all conditions, it feels secure and controlled. The Audi is economical too. For a car weighing more than 1.8 tonnes, we've been impressed to see mid-40s MPG in everyday driving and 25.3 MPG while towing. The Q5 is a pleasure to live with every day as well as to tow with. The S-Line model comes with firmer, sporty suspension, but it stays just the right side of being uncomfortable. Inside, the Q5 is very well finished, as you'd expect of an Audi. Instead of conventional dials, straight in front of you, you get a configurable screen. You can adjust the display using controls on the steering wheel to prioritize whatever information you, you want. The infotainment system here looks fantastic, but one criticism I do have is that it can be a bit distracting to use on the move. You've got to press very precisely on the right part of the screen, and it does mean you're taking your eyes away from the road briefly. On the other hand, it's good to see that Audi hasn't included the air con controls within one of the touchscreen menus. They're down here, nice and separate, proper rotary knobs that are easy to reach for, while you're driving without taking your eyes from what you're supposed to be looking at the road ahead of you. In the back, despite the sloping roofline, headroom is actually pretty good and there's plenty of legroom for adults. Something else I like is these air vents here between the front seats, which will keep everyone in the back at a comfortable temperature. And on this model, you get separate temperature controls in the back, so you don't have to be at the same temperature as the front seat passenger and the driver. Something that's not quite so good though is this big stout transmission tunnel. Now that's going to get in your way if you're going to have three people traveling in the back. There are Isofix mounting points, as you'd expect. They're covered by little clip-on covers, which once you've taken those away, it's nice and easy to fit a child seat into the back seats. Although there is plenty of space in the back, it is quite dark. I'd certainly think about having a panoramic sunroof as an optional extra if I was going to buy an Audi Q5. Choose the Sportback over the standard Q5 and boot space with the rear seats upright drops from 550 litres to 510 litres. But this is still a reasonably practical family SUV. For our money, we prefer the standard Q5 for its bigger boot and keener pricing. But if you fall in love with the coupe meets SUV styling of the Sportback, we wouldn't blame you for reaching a different conclusion. Either way, the Q5 makes an excellent tow car and a worthy award winner.